Hey guys, today is Golden Bubble Package Day, and this is where I send out my packages to my Golden Bubble patrons. They get a gift from me, a handmade gift, and it's usually two items. And it's usually the stuff that I've made in the past month. So for this month, some of my patrons are getting a black bath bomb. I think they're all gonna get a soap. Some might get candles. But for the first time, I'm using this size of box. And this will allow me to fit in two items. I've been needing a box like this for a long time. I usually use a, a bit of a longer box, which comfortably fits three items, but I've been sending out two item packages. So this smaller box is definitely gonna save me some money in postage. And I like these collapsible boxes because they're really easy to put together. I think I got these from Amazon. And if you want the exact measurements, that'll be in the link down below. And now that we have all of our boxes assembled, what we need to do now is fill them up with some paper, crinkled paper fill. Unfortunately, when I reopen, I won't have the luxury of being able to, to do it this fast because packages will be different sizes and will have different products in them. But I think for this tier, it's been nice to get some practice in, not only in the products, but using this space so that I know how to most efficiently use everything so that once I do reopen, I'll be in a much better position. I'll be able to have my processes down and maybe by then I'll be wanting to hire some people and I could explain to them the process. So now that I've filled the boxes with crinkled paper, the next step is to add my products. This is the lavender rosemary soy wax soap that I made over a month ago. Oh, and it still smells so good. And look at that, it fits perfectly into the box. And then next to it, we're gonna put a little bath bomb. I have these black bath bombs that I made. They're just gonna go nicely in that nest. And we have the perfect size for this package. And we're gonna add just a little bit more fill to just make sure that that bath bomb doesn't go rolling around everywhere. We have the packages mostly done. Each one gets a handwritten note of thanks from me, but there is an element missing, and that is the part that goes here, and that will not only brand my box, but add just a little bit of extra touch that will add to the customer experience when they open the box. And for that, I'm gonna use this video sponsor, Munbin. Munbin sent me these gorgeous gold label stickers that I'm gonna use to add that final touch. I usually use my Munbin thermal printer for my shipping labels. I love them for that. And I also use the printer to make these um, I'm fragile stickers that I like to stick on my packages. The Munbin printer is super easy to use. Let me show you how it's done. You'll need a .png or .jpg file of the image you want printed on your Munbin label. Make sure that the image is sized so that it will fit inside of that sticker. The gold circle labels are two inches by two inches, so my image is slightly smaller than that. Select the Munbin printer from the list and make sure you select the right size of the sticker when selecting your paper size. Next, I select scale to fit and then I press print. So I was able to print my logo on these gorgeous gold stickers. And now all I have to do is peel them off. And you can see that these ones are a little transparent. 
I think they're so beautiful. And you can see how gorgeous that gold sticker looks. And it really does complete the look that I'm going for. And that completes this package. I like to give my boxes a nice shake to make sure everything is secure in there. And then it's ready to go. Hey guys, it is the next day. My packages were picked up by USPS and there were a few packages that would have been cheaper by a few cents if I had gone with UPS, but I still need to figure out whether or not my location is, is what is what do you call it? If my location is eligible for pickup, because <laughs> that's important. Kayla and I just have one car out here and he needs it to go to work. Having the delivery truck come and pick up the packages has been so convenient. I'm gonna be making sugar scrubs, but I'm gonna try a different technique. And I'm just currently in my pursuit of what is the best recipe for when I actually launch. So I'm in my testing phase, trying different things phase, all with the goal of having the best products that I can possibly have available to my customers once I reopen. So, what I'm making right now is a whipped soap base that I can use for my sugar scrubs and also for whipped soap because I really want to provide both in my product line. I've made a whipped soap base and I like that one, but I'm going to tweak the recipe a little bit to see what happens. I'm going to add a little bit of xanthan gum to the water this time, see whether or not that can make the texture of the scrub feel a little bit fluffier. The goal is to add thickness without it being hard, if that makes sense. So the first step is wetting that xanthan gum so that I can use it. And we're going to wet it in some distilled water here. Next is the xanthan gum. We're just going to sprinkle it over the top of the water to wet it. Now we're going to continue to wet the xanthan gum in the water. Okay, so now that we have wetted the powder, now we're gonna mix this up using a hand mixer with the beater blades. Okay, so you can see we now have a nice jelly. All of that xanthan gum has been dispersed and we're ready to move on to the next step. So to make this whipped soap base, I'm gonna to need to melt down my ingredients and I'm gonna do that in this crock pot over here. We're gonna add our water jelly mixture. We're gonna add some SCI powder. Some glycerin. Now let's do, let's do stearic acid first. Let's do all our dry ingredients first. And last is cocomidopropyl betaine. Okay, now we need to melt all of this down in the crock pot and I'll come back once we're ready to move on to the next step. So the mixture has completely melted and has turned into this liquid and you want to make sure that all of the stearic acid has melted. So take a little bit between your fingertips 
And if there's any type of greediness, then it's not ready yet. I've already done that test and we are completely smooth here. So now what I'm gonna do, while it's still fluid like this, is I'm going to stick blend it to really get everything fully incorporated. That is completely stick blended. Now we have to add our preservative. We should test the temperature first. And it's a little too hot still to add a preservative, but this should cool down. And once it gets to the right temperature, then we're gonna add our preservative. So the base has cooled down enough, sitting at 127, so that's cool enough to add our optifin. Okay, and now that it's in there, we're going to stir it completely into our soap base. And you can see it's solidifying on us nicely. We really want to thoroughly mix everything so that we get that preservative in the entire batch. And this will help keep our base shelf stable until we are ready to use it. So this is our whipped soap base. We're gonna keep letting it solidify overnight. And once it's all settled, then we can turn this into sugar scrub, which I will show you tomorrow. Hey guys, it is the next day and the whipped soap base has had time to settle down. Now we're gonna move on to the next component of the sugar scrub and that's adding some butters and oils and a little bit of stearic acid so that the scrub can keep its shape and not deflate. The emulsifier we're using is some polywax, polywax, polo wax. We already have some stearic acid in the whipped soap base, so we don't need much for the scrub. A little bit of stearic acid. And add some shea butter. And these butters and oils should counteract that cleansing factor of a foaming sugar scrub so that it doesn't feel too harsh. And then for our soft oil, we're adding some sweet almond oil. And this will help the hollow wax and stearic acid melt down which we're gonna do in a water bath. So let's get this going and start it melting. And once it's melted, then we'll move on to the next step. So we've made our embeds and the oils, emulsifier, and butter have melted down. Now we're gonna take out our whipped soap base, which has had plenty of time to settle down. And here is what that looks like. We're gonna measure out our whipped soap base into this mixing bowl. We're gonna add our sugar. And we're gonna get this going in the stand mixer and get it whipping on a low speed to start. Now that we've got the sugar scrub going a little bit, now we're gonna add our melted butter, oil, and emulsifier. So we are done whipping it up. So here is the texture of the scrub. And it's hard to explain. It's, it's very much like a fluffy marshmallow type of texture. Do you see how it just goes in like that? And if you're wondering about the scoopability factor, it scoops like that. <laughs> it scoops quite easily. Let's split this up into two. But before we do that, I need to add my preservative to account for the extra sugar and fragrance oil and all the other extra stuff we put in here. So I'm gonna use a little bit of Optifin Plus. 
Then we're gonna use some mushroom extract from Crafter's Choice that I got from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'm just gonna mix that in using a hand mixer. Now to split these two apart. I think that looks about right. So for scent, I actually got this idea from a really cool company called Twisted Allure. And they have these things called split scrubs where the scrub is in two separate colors and each color has its own scent. So it's not a blend of scents, it's just, it's like a two in one scrub. So I'm gonna do that for this scrub. One half is gonna be blue, the other half is gonna be purple. I don't know if I told you the theme of this. Yeah, so the theme of the scrub is Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> and for those familiar with the story, it's about the Headless Horseman and he's in the woods. So it definitely fits into the theme of haunted wood. So one side is gonna be scented in Pumpkin by Mont Rouge Canada. And the other side is gonna be scented in The Holidays, also by Mont Rouge Canada. So The Holidays has pine, Juniper, it's a very woodsy scent, and I absolutely love it. It smells so good. And then pumpkin obviously is a very fall, warm, spicy, nutty scent. And the two of them together, even though we're not blending them, but the two scents coming out of that jar, I think is gonna be really fun. The first one, let's do the blue, and let's scent that one in the pumpkin fragrance oil. Love Marouge's pumpkin fragrance oil, it smells so good has notes of bourbon, oak, maple, caramel, and cinnamon. And for color, we're gonna be using Blue Suede Shoes Mica, which is a, like a denim color, like a very dark blue. Yeah, it's, it looks almost black in the video there, but it's super, super dark. We're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of it. the blue side now we're gonna do the purple side it definitely gave the dark blue that I was going for now we're doing our purple side scented in the holidays oh, it smells so good I love it we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of violet blue mica violet blue mica by Fizz Fairy which is a, a very dark violet purple blue Let's start mixing this guy. So here are our two beautiful colors. They turned out really, really good. This scrub texture is amazing. I love it. I really do think that the addition of the addition of the xanthan xanthan gum when we did our whip soap base is contributing to this fluffy marshmallow feel, which I really like in a scrub. And I think a lot of people do too. Here's the blue side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pipe it into some jars. So let's go ahead and do that. These are gonna be gifts to my Golden Bubble patrons, so I'm gonna be using these four ounce jars that I got from Amazon. They're gonna be linked down below. How beautiful is that and it looks so fun from the sides with that blue and purple gradient 
We're not done. Scrubs can change in texture and in color in the span of 12 hours. So what we're gonna do is cap these guys and take a look at them the next day to see what they look like and also to see how it applies because one problem a lot of people have with sugar scrubs is that they tend to get harder. So the texture that you have the day before is gonna be completely different the day after. So tonight I actually have some really exciting plans. It's Kale and my, it's Kale and I's, is, it's date night for Kale and I, and we're actually gonna see a drive-in movie, and the movie is gonna be Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. It comes out today. Yeah, super excited about that. That was really sweet. He surprised me with this. And yeah, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be a fun Friday night. I'm really, really looking forward to it because I don't know if I'll ever see a Taylor Swift concert in my lifetime in person. The ticket prices are so expensive and she always has such long periods in between her tours. So maybe the next one in a couple of years when she does her, whatever, whatever new phase in her life she's gonna be, then I'll probably be a fan because I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a huge, Huge Swifty. I don't talk about it too much, but I love her. She's awesome. These IKEA Tupperwares are so poorly constructed. I love IKEA, but wow, you get what you pay for. This this lid is not closing properly on my Tupperware. Man. Bites? I had a bite a couple minutes ago. Casting out that way towards the weeds. I think it was a bass. It's a great morning. Yeah, it rained all night. Kale's actually taking a bit of a break because he's making candles for our friend Jenny. And she specifically requested this one candle that we made that we gave her a jar of. And she has bought several of that same candle and she's requesting more. So since Kayla's on a candle kick, he is making some for her. I got the lure stuck in the tree and Kayla was able to get it down. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go see how his candles are doing. Looks like we have it all melted now. He's making pink strawberry shortcake candles. And it looks like it's about ready. Oh, got steamy there. So while Kale cleans up down there, I'm going to show you what the scrub looks like the next day. And before I open it, you can see that the colors have stayed pretty much the same as when I piped them in. The blue has turned into more of a gray blue, which I think is fine. I think it still goes with the sleepy hollow theme. And when you open it, it looks like that with the pretty leaf in the center. Let's do a demo. So we are in my bathroom. First bit I want to show you is how this melt and pour soap piece lathers. Lathers pretty, oops, lathers pretty good. It's soap. I'm going to go in for a big scoop. The texture of this is extremely soft and very, very spreadable. We got some great bubbles here. Incredible. I'm in love, in love with this soft, pillowy texture and I'm so excited about it. Here is the final sugar scrub with the label that I designed on it. It's a clear label, but I'm playing around with colors and gradients and shapes to make it a more interesting product. And I'm really liking this whole label evolution. I'm really loving the extra effort that I'm putting into designing the labels to make them a little bit more unique so that they stand out a little bit more. And of course there is an ingredient label in the back as well. If you want the recipe and steps to make this 
foaming whipped sugar scrub. It's a really good one. I definitely think it's one of the best that I've ever formulated. Then you can find that on my Patreon, which is linked down below. And thank you to everyone who chooses to support me on there. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I'm not leaving out the rest of you, the people who watch my videos, that comment, that like my videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys as well. Also, a huge thanks to Munbin for sponsoring this video without your amazing printer and your labels. I definitely don't think that my shipping process would go as smoothly or as quickly as it does. So thank you to them. And if you are interested in looking at those labels that I use or even the laser printer, not laser printer, the thermal printer that I use, then you can find a link to that as well down below. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, and I will see you guys in that next video. So bye guys.